In this video, we're going to be looking at the XAOC Devices Swastapol 2. This is a module I truly believe is underrated and underutilized by so many people. And this was actually one of the reasons I started this whole YouTube channel is because I did not see anybody else really showcasing the power of this module online. So really excited to dive in and give you a tour today. I'm going to start off with a quick overview of the module. Then I'm going to dive into showing you kind of what it looks like to run one of your synths through a series of guitar pedals using this module. Then at the end, I'm going to hook up my guitar and really demonstrate the envelope release and comparator functions of this module. All right, so let me just dive in and give you the quick tour of what this is. So at its core, what it allows you to do is it lets you to send out a quarter inch signal here at a line level. So that means at guitar level, you can export a signal from your system. So you just plug in, for example, here, if I wanted the output of my subharmonicon, I just export that the to export. I have control over the level that I want to send or boost or cut that. I can then export that, which I'm going to actually do and send into a guitar setup. I now am running through a boss um, mega distortion pedal, and then I've got a DL4 here off camera down below. And uh, I then can run all of that back into my system. So I'm able to run an entire guitar effects loop or go to a guitar simulator or any sort of external effects box. And you can take an entire loop and run that out of your system and back into it. And again, you have control here over the gain of that as well. On the flip side, if I wanted to, I could also just use the import feature to pull in, say, maybe something like a guitar signal. And that I think is actually where this gets really powerful because the other two interesting features that make this really different than your standard input output module are that it has an envelope follower and a comparator. So an envelope follower will let us take something like a guitar sound wave and actually take the volume kind of uh, wave of all of that and turn that into an envelope, which we can control other features with. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use this to actually duck uh, basically a, a low pass filter, duck it down to kind of create more space for the guitar, kind of pull out some of the other noise. So I'm basically almost using it as like a side chaining effect because this envelope follower actually has um, an envelope out, which will send you a positive and then an inverted out, which will send you the negative version, which is great if you want to do some side chaining. Other cool thing is say you don't want to do that off this guitar, but you just need an envelope follower in your system. If you plug here into follow, it overrides the normaling and you have this little envelope follower and it's completely own unique little kind of feature here. The other thing to know about the envelope follower is you have this little feature here, which is actually a low end cut. Um, but this is not actually a, say, per se, filter that you audibly hear. This is just simply deciding um, to tell your envelope follower whether it should cut off, um, basically have no cutoff, take everything. You can cut off below 33 hertz here, so any just kind of loud, really low rumbling that might be there that you don't want to be impacting it. You can also cut it off at 3K if you just really want to envelope follow the high end of it. So again, really useful because even especially something in guitar, I find I'm turning off that 33 or turning it off at 33 hertz there because you'll often get kind of these low harmonics that make the volume look higher if you're looking at everything. But if you put it here, I find you get a much more um, actual smoother envelope following that is with an audible range. Last thing over here, you have a comparator. So a comparator is basically something that is going to send out a trigger every time it starts, um, kind of goes over a threshold and or it'll send out a gate. So basically, if you think about the gate, it's anytime I am, say, playing a guitar or sending signal through this, it is going to send out a positive signal. Um, and then likewise, trigger would be anytime we start a new sequence of playing or we hit a new note or something like that. And the threshold is going to let you kind of um, really kind of mess with uh, basically what is it? It's kind of like a, if you think about a gate kind of um, that you would put on a vocal, it's saying, OK, how loud does it need to be to say yes, um, that this is on and to yes to send a trigger into a gate input. So that's kind of like saying if it's quiet enough, we'll ignore it. If it gets loud enough, then yes, it'll trigger again. Now, one of the other things I love about this module before I dive into the features is the manual. It is uh, so rare in your rack these days to actually see a printed manual. And I mean, this thing is beautifully done here. 
Uh, you have just kind of like really deep technical explanations explaining to you how all of the features are working. Uh, you've got this whole kind of wonderful diagram here. And then if we go to the back, you have um, literally, this is kind of where it's explaining to you what the comparator is doing, how that's all working. And you have an entire signal flow here showing you literally what's normal to what, how the entire uh, signal processes through the system. So uh, amazing, really, really well done. Kind of all this old fashioned, well-branded, uh, you know, get a cool box with it too. And I gotta say, that is something you don't see too much in the Eurorack space. So really, really amazed and impressed by what they pulled off there. All right, so next I'm gonna dive in and I'm gonna show you first the synth running through this. Then I'm gonna be showing you actually my guitar running through this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate this guitar pedal setup here and how I've got this kind of whole thing wired. So at the moment, we have the output of my subharmonicon running here into this. And uh, we're gonna see that this is actually then triggering and running back over here into the boss mega distortion, out of that into a line six, and then out of the line six here, back into the system. Now, what I still need to do that I did not do earlier when I was showing you is I need to take that imported feed and bring that back into the system. So I'm gonna take this here, and now this is routing over into my mixer here off screen. So what is really cool is if I can go ahead and hit play, you'll see that this is actually a clean signal because my pedal is off, but I am distorting. And so again, this is the red signal uh, that you can see right here, basically showing that we're distorting a bit. So now you see we've got a basically clean signal going through, but we are routing it all through the pedals. So if I go ahead and turn on my distortion pedal, get a cool, nice distortion in there. Maybe I'll turn that down a little. And then I'm gonna turn the mix up on my delay. I'll turn that off so it's a little bit more audible. You can just see I'm messing with the delay, make it real obvious. Eh? And so really cool thing, we can basically route this through an entire series of external effects and just go ahead and bring those directly into the system. So um, again, I can still kind of come here and mess with this. So again, if you're into guitar pedals, if you've got a guitar pedal set up, I mean, this thing is, it's a no brainer if you're already into pedals of some sort because it's now gonna let you take your synths and run them through all the other effects you already have for guitars or other things like that. So just a ton of potential and just that side of it alone. All right, so for the next part of this video, I wanna demonstrate showing you hooking a guitar into this. And this is gonna give me a much better chance to demonstrate the envelope follower and the comparator as well. So what we currently have set up here is basically the output of my guitar set up here into the Soastopole. And then we've got the output of that currently running into my mixer. Um, and we'll actually run it through some other Eurorack effects here in a bit. And so the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and uh, take the envelope follower. And so I'm gonna run this through my scope over here, have over here. And uh, then that envelope follower is actually gonna be running to a low pass filter, which I'll demonstrate in a bit. But for now, let me just show you how the envelope follower works. All right, so if I go ahead and play my guitar now and you watch the scope, you'll actually see an envelope being created from my playing. actually clipped a little there at the end because I had this, I guess, a little too hot. But uh, again, we can play. And so you really see what's kind of cool there is that those envelopes, you know, they're really based on the kind of dynamics of my playing. So um, this will generate a larger envelope follower um, accordingly. Now, the other thing to look at is the envelope follower also has an inverted output. Again, really simple it be the exact same thing, literally just inverted. So uh, really basic, simple there, but I find I actually love using this because you can use it to say, uh, duck something else. The other thing to know is this envelope followers, you have an envelope release, which is going to basically let you kind of extend how long that is. And then you have a short and a long. Uh, I find for guitar playing, you want this pretty short, but for other use cases, you know, you might want something longer, but 
Now if I play this, look at how much bigger that envelope is. That's even if I like kind of shut it down quickly, it just, it, it decays much slower and we can go all the way up to a long where it's going to be a, a pretty heavy envelope on that. So super long there. I mean, it's just not even going to come down fast enough here. But maybe if we do long and we do a little short, we can kind of see where we can get with that. Cool. So I find with guitar, I love it pretty short, um, just so I can play. And if I'm sure if you were doing kind of like more ambient, slow stuff, you might want a little longer release. But uh, again, I like that just kind of quick, really quick uh, reaction there. Again, I keep it down to here on guitar at about the 33 hertz cutoff. You can also uh, drop off, you know, 3K hertz, and then you know it'll pick up more on say your bass notes. But it really cuts. Uh, sorry, it'll it won't pick up your bass notes much, but it'll pick up your higher notes and it just I, I don't find that that's functional for say guitar really but uh, definitely can be a useful function I think if you are running say uh, like drum machines or a, a, two, a stereo mix of something into here you say you're running a stereo mix that had drums and high parts in it you might want to just uh, use that to kind of filter out some of the drums okay so how do we actually make this thing useful so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn up a pattern I just have just the quarter notes hitting on a manis a teratos here which is a pretty grungy kind of bass sound and then I'm going to go ahead and add in um, this to the mix. And you're going to see you're here. Basically, you're going to have a, a low pass filter that's going to kind of duck when I play the guitar. So uh, we'll hear how that sounds here. So you can hear just the what you can kind of do with it, which is really cool. Is like the dynamic of my playing determines how much that filter is going to duck and uh, that's how much space it'll create for the guitar. So really cool stuff you can think about using this to really sidechain anything, kind of control your mix, feature your solo on your guitar. Um, it's just going to kind of you can just use it to like duck things. And it's like that, that I think is just one use case that I'm loving with it. But I mean, you can use this to control so many different things. I've used this to kind of control like bringing up the volume and kind of bringing in a synth with my guitar where I tuned the synth down to a drop D and then basically play the guitar and drop D. So you have this kind of drone synth note that plays every time you play along with the guitar. Um, so some really cool things you can kind of do with making this happen. All right, now the other piece I wanna show you is the comparator. And so I'm gonna go ahead, you have a trigger out and an envelope out in the comparator. And again, what the comparator is doing is basically saying, Anytime that the signal goes above this threshold level that we set here, uh, and again, they have some great documentation on this in the manual, but anytime it goes above that threshold, the comparator is going to send a trigger and start a gate signal. And then as soon as it drops below that threshold, it turns off, and the next time it goes above, it starts a trigger and a gate signal again. Okay, so let me demonstrate this comparator. Right now we have it patched into the gate output. And so if you watch the scope here, So if, you, so if you watch the scope here, you can see the comparator turn on and off as I play notes. And if I hold, it eventually drops. But watch if I can kind of change that threshold a bit. And let's try to see what happens if I crank it that way. So there it's not, it's, it's barely, you have to get really loud. So I actually turned it the wrong way. If I wanted to stay on a little more, turn it the other way. And one of these things you'll see, and this is where comparators get kind of weird, is you see those kind of little jerks at the end? That is because it's kind of like wavering in that phase between on and off. So comparators are kind of tricky with guitar. Um, so I think you kind of need to use them in a way that's not crucial. Um, or you're mainly using the gates, because again, if I look at triggers here, 
Uh, so what a trigger does is it just sends one really rapid pulse. So you can use this to turn things on and off, but... Here we go. So here's triggers. But now let's now let's let one of those ring. And you see all those triggers? Like I didn't hit another note. So that's where comparators and guitar are kind of weird. Again, probably a different signal if you're taking, say, like a, a mix output of a mixer or something, or of like a, a stereo DJ system. Um, I think you'd have a very different kind of experience there because you'd have a little bit more control and you could really tune that in. But with guitar, I think I find the comparator, uh, you're, you're typically better off using the gate signal and then trying to not use it on something that's crucially going to make a massive audio difference. So uh, what I have actually done is I have patched the output of the gate signal into the bend mode on my data bender. And so if I turn my volume up here, I'm gonna play some notes. You're gonna see this blue light turn on and off uh, with the comparator here. So let me just show you here. And one of the things with the data bender, and this is where it gets a little tricky, uh, is that is a latching mode. So um, it's kind of wherever it ends. So it's not always the best use case, but you're still alternating between this effect on and off. So. So again, this bend function isn't perfect. You could also take it and you could, you know, add it to something like your mix here. So we can turn that mix off. And then as soon as we start playing, it actually would send up a high signal. Pretty wild. <laughs> so again, there we've demonstrated the uh, envelope follower and the comparator. And so we've got them uh, kind of both rocking here. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to kind of lower the threshold on that thing a little. Let me try that out. So I'm going to kind of just jam on this. I'm going to turn back up that Manus Ateritas and just kind of do a little playing over the top of that so you can kind of hear what you can kind of do with this. Thank you. 
right, so there you go. As you can see, this thing is really interesting what you can do with your rig. I don't even feel like I've scratched the surface with a thing of what's really possible. So many ways you can kind of control different parameters in your system and kind of mess around with that. But really excited. I feel like just what it allows with guitar pedals, adding that into the entire system, what it allows in terms of you inputting a guitar as a more expressive instrument. You could put a microphone into this as well. Why not? So like, let's do that real quick. So I got this microphone here and uh, I'm just gonna come up and talk into this thing. And then I'm gonna run that through the data vendor here. And uh, you can just hear my voice getting pretty uh, insane here. A lot of interesting sounds going. Maybe turn up that, uh, oh my God, that is my voice. So again, uh, so many possibilities. You could input anything you wanted into this. And uh, you get really interesting stuff. I'm just running this just through the data vendor. I could put this through a reverb unit. I could put this through distortion. I could modulate, frequency modulate my voice. Like a lot of fun things you could do with this. So as you can see here, the possibilities with this thing, it just opens up a whole wide world of getting things into and out of your system. It is only mono in and out, but that's okay because I think you're mainly looking at guitar signals. I don't think you're gonna be doing stereo in and out. And as far as I know, there's nothing like this that does stereo anyway. But um, really amazing. Super happy I have this into my system. I just love getting a good groove going on my synth, hooking in my guitar, putting my guitar through some effects, clocking the effects, and just doing some weird sounding stuff. It just it's really interesting and you can just use your guitar in ways where like it doesn't even sound like a guitar through here and you're just like what is that making that noise that's my guitar through a crazy synthesizer system and just super fun so highly recommend picking up one of these things they are awesome they're amazing uh can't sing the praises enough i uh, love these guys at xaoc devices with a swastapol 2 uh, it is a 1948 audio port in voltage extractor number two. Pretty exciting stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed this video here, found it helpful. So hope you guys enjoyed this video here, found it helpful. And of course, follow the rabbit.